So I'd like to start with an addendum to the previous episode. I made a pretty serious mistake in analyzing evidence, mostly because I completely forgot about a piece of evidence I totally knew about but didn't apply. Ugh. Anyway, basically I said in the last episode that the mass ultimately escaped from the facility, but what I forgot about was the model that we fell onto. At one point in the game, we fell through the ceiling into a display, and that display happens to show exactly the place that we end up as the mass at the end of the game. Based on this, it has to be said that we didn't really escape at all. We have simply played into the goals of the people, and we remain captive to them. So what does this change? I don't think it changes a ton. It means, first off, that this is not a good ending. It is most definitely the bad ending. We have succeeded at nothing except for the creation of a single mass. Now, with that aside, we can actually move into analyzing the player, who the player is, and potentially what this means. So I want to start with the fact that I strongly believe that the player is trying to be a liberating force. I don't think that from the very beginning we are being manipulated. We are trying to infiltrate this compound for a reason of our own. Our goal ultimately is the secret ending, the splitting of the entire mind control network. We're running from all of these guards because the goal of the people is to bring us into the mass. We don't really know that that's their goal at the beginning of the game. You can tell because we do become one with the mass. We try to liberate it by removing the mind control helmets that are, I would guess, ostensibly controlling it. But that ultimately ends up working into the favor of the people. So we are a force trying to liberate the followers. But the question remains, are we a follower? Now clearly we as a player are not the same type of follower as the workers are. We are not strictly being controlled by another entity within the game, but I believe there are a few instances in which the game is trying to point out that there is a force actually controlling us. I will present two main points of evidence. The first is one particular testing chamber we go through in the facility. In this facility, we enter a room with a box, and our goal is to get through the other door, and it's clearly a pre-built testing chamber. Now, what we do in the testing chamber isn't really what matters, but what we see. The perspective of the player comes from the other side of the glass. We're not with the player anymore, instead we sit akin to a scientist watching the player act. And I think this makes a lot more sense once we've looked at the second point, which is the secret ending. Once we have removed the full power from the mind control network, we can see that the player slumps over, almost as though he no longer has control of himself. This is clearly related back to how the workers slump over when they're removed from the mind control network. With this in mind, clearly we're being controlled by something. And that something may be understood by looking at the background in the secret ending. In the background, we can see a mass of wires connecting into a single mind control unit with a bank of computers behind it. This is strange because where normally you would expect to see a person hooked in, controlling everything, we instead see wires in the place of that human. Through this, we can infer that it's actually the computers that are controlling some form of the mind control net. But I believe that in the secret ending, what we're doing is not just removing a mind control net, but removing a connection between the player, as in yourself, and the player, as in the character in the game. In essence, we are ourselves mind-controlling our character to do what we want him to do, not unlike how our character mind-controls the other workers around them to complete the puzzles presented to him. Through this, we can see that the main ending, we're not only being manipulated by the people, but we're being manipulated to remain within the control structure, which is a game in and of itself, being in this case viewed as an inhuman way of controlling another entity. 
Now, is this actually what games are? I don't know. This is just what I've inferred through the game so far. But it is quite... But this is quite interesting because the removal of the control of the player seems to destroy everything. It creates a restarting cycle, which I will talk more about in the next episode, how that relates to potentially the meaning behind the game. But through this recurring cycle, in an essence, the player destroys themselves, the player being the character, in order to liberate themselves from the control. This, of course, plays directly back into the motif that we've seen, where removing the workers from mind control, although it seems to kill them, that death is a better alternative than the control. And here the player, the character in the game, is choosing to destroy themselves instead of being controlled by us. Now this all got a bit complicated, and it's still hard to say whether or not my analysis is necessarily correct, because the player's goals in the end are so vague to begin with. I think that's a good parsing out of the player and how we stand in the world. Regardless, before I go so far down this rabbit hole that I no longer know what I'm talking about either, <laughs> yeah, um, we'll bring this to an end. So basically, the player is in and of themselves a follower that is acting to remove not only the other followers from the mind control network, but themselves also from their own shackles imposed by us, the player. Next time, we are going to take other literary works and actually try to create and defend a thesis for one potential meaning of this game. Until then, thanks for watching, and of course, Enjoy the rest of your day.